Don't try anything you see here at home. This is educational purpose only. I had a friend ask me how to recrystallize ETN. So I figured I'd show him. I'm not going to do all of this ETN. I'm just going to do a small amount of it. So what we're going to do is we'll take some of the ETN. And we're going to add the ETN into the beaker here. Well, let me know if that battery dies and it shuts off. It's already really low. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add some of the ETN in here. Now the key is, is you want to use just as little acetone as you possibly can. I mean, you do not want much. The less you use, the better. And the less you use, the less um, water it will take to crash it back out. It does not take much. See that it's almost completely back in solution there. How much are you gonna recrystallize? Just a couple scoops there. So there we go. It's in the solution, right? A lot, uh, a lot of water. Oh, I almost forgot. This is uh, sodium bicarbonate water. Uh, there will be some acid left in it whenever you do this. A lot of guys will even add a little bit of baking soda directly to the acetone. What's that for? It's to neutralize any of the acid that ended up coming out of the inside of the crystals. Trapped the, in yeah, yeah, right. crystallization. So at this point, we've definitely taking all of the acid out. We got a little bit more in here just to make sure that it's all gone up. You use too little water, what will happen is, is it'll turn to like a foil and beat up in the bottom and then it'll get really coarse and it'll be a pain in the ass doing it. So you want to Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you want to use... You're not getting it. So you want to use way more water. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Right, let it set for a second. Even stir it. You really don't want it to stick all over the place. I'm actually going to do it like this. The more turbulent, the better, because you don't you don't want the stuff just to settle and then stick to the glass. Then, uh, right? A little teeny bit of fresh water. And it literally will become like it'll be it'll be sticky to the glass. The stuff once it's recrystallized becomes quite hard and crunchy compared to what it was. There's our recrystallized product. And then all you gotta do is filter it and dry it. Hopefully the battery doesn't die in this thing while I'm doing it. You're good. It generally will die with no warning. <laughs> so we got that. And I want to get this stuff off the thermometer, which is quite, like I said, it gets like crunchy and hard. Buddy of mine, very cool fella, from outside of the country. You know who you are. Asked me not to say his name, but uh, yeah, here's uh, the recrystallized product right there. Oop. I just did a little teeny bit because I'm going to set the rest of this off doing something else in a few minutes and I don't want I don't have time for it to dry. So there, see how much coarser, how much bigger the crystals are? I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah. But uh that's what it ends up like. That is recrystallized and if you wanted to you could store that or do melt cast with it. I wouldn't recommend I don't store any of it, but I would never recommend it raw like this without a recrystallization. And I also wouldn't do a melt cast without doing what we did here. And okay, that's how you recrystallize ETN. Thanks for watching. Is it awful? This one? This one.